Okay. Hello, Shiloh family, and thank you for joining us online for the Thursday cell group studies and also the prayer meeting. And before we begin, let us uh, approach the Lord in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, who is existing from eternity to eternity and even working now without resting for the consummation of redemptive history, we give you all of the thanks and glory and honor and praise to you. Father, at this time, we come to you with humble hearts. We come to you with a, a desire to return to you and to truly receive the word that you would have us to hear today and to act upon. Father, may this word be a timely word to speak to us personally, to our families, to our situations. May this word be able to have creative power and to be able to move and be active and alive in every situation in our lives. May it be able to transform our hearts. May this word be able to transform our minds, our thinking, our thoughts and emotions. May it drive out all of the diseases and darkness in our bodies. And Father, may you be glorified during this time. We thank you for all of the participants here and who will listen online. And we give you all of the glory. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. And let me get to the title page here. Okay. So lesson 14. So uh, we're already 14 weeks into the year. And time is really going by fast. Uh, Prophet Zechariah's encouragement. The main passage is Zechariah 4, 6. And uh, we'll look at this passage together. And you can take out your Bibles, please. And we'll look at uh, this passage and read it together. Okay, Zechariah 4, 6. You can look at your Bibles and on the screen. Let us read together from wherever you are at. Ready, begin. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel saying, not by might, not by power, but my, by my spirit says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of God. Amen. So this is an amazing word of God that he has to speak to us today. So as an introduction, God spurred on the mighty progression of the temple construction by proclaiming his word, not only through the prophet Haggai, which we learned in the last couple of weeks, but also through prophet Zechariah. And so through this, we can learn that every matter of God is confirmed by two or three witnesses, two or three witnesses. So, you know, it's not just one person, you know, they uh, receive some kind of revelation, but uh, the word of God will always be confirmed by another person or another testimony. And so through these two prophets, we see that the temple construction was continued and it was consummated. It was completed. So in this lesson, we'll examine how the word of God was proclaimed through prophet Zechariah. So this will be our focus today. So the word given in the eighth month of the second year of King Darius. So there's no date uh, as in day, but it just, the Bible says it was the eighth month. Zechariah 1.1 1, 1 says, uh, in the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, uh, the prophet, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, saying. So it doesn't stay the day, but it does stay the uh, month, which is the eighth month. So if you follow along in your cell group study books, although the temple construction had resumed on the 24th day of the sixth month, the Israelites had yet to return wholeheartedly to the Lord, hence his call to return. 
So, uh, of course, you know, they started to, you know, make their turnaround and to begin the process, but uh, in their hearts, they were still not wholly returned to God. And it was probably because of the doubt uh, caused by interference and also all of the, uh, the oppression and the intimidation that was happening to them uh, from the people around them, the enemies and the adversaries. And so, you know, this was this uh, question that was in their hearts, this doubt. So doubt and despair. And in this situation, God sends the prophet Zechariah to give comfort and encouragement and assurance to the people. So God says, return to him. And uh, these are extra verses. Joel 2, 12, 13, it says, yet even now return to me with all your heart. So God wants us to return to him with all of our hearts, not just, you know, with, um, with our, um, you know, motions without any heart or, you know, just going through the motions. And God says, and with fasting, weeping, and mourning, and render your heart and not just your garments. So what this is saying is, you know, don't let this be, you know, just uh, going through the motions, but truly repent to God with our hearts. Hosea 6, 1 through 3 says the same thing. It says, come, let us return to the Lord. And he has torn us, but he will heal us. And so what does it mean to return to the Lord? It says in verse 3, specifically, so let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. So to return to the Lord is to come back with our hearts and to be receptive to his word and to know his word and to understand his word because he is the word. To know the word is to know him. And Jeremiah 4, 3 and 4 says the same thing. It says, break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns. So what does this mean? This is going back to the parable of the parable of the uh, sower and the seeds. And there's the ground and there's thorns in there. And the ground has become hardened. So, you know, the seed, is, it's really hard to plant into this ground. Even if it gets put into the ground, there's thorns there, which take out the life. And these thorns are talking about the worries and anxieties of life, the desire to get rich, the following and chasing after riches, uh, and also this fallow ground is talking about this ground that was once soft, but now it was hard and it had become cracked and so dry because there was no water. There was no grace and blessings, no more tears, no more, you know, blessings from the word. There's no more emotion there, and everything's dry. So God says, circumcise yourselves to the Lord and remove the foreskins of your heart. And that's what we're doing in the time of Lent. And we should be in a time of really mourning and fasting and praying, really, uh, not only for our nation, but for our church and for Shiloh and for our families and for ourselves. This is a, to be, to be quite honest, it's a time of crisis because the church uh, and uh, all of the situations that are happening around it is, you know, really in disarray. And we're really in a, a crisis, although we may not, you know, express it all the time. So verse three states, uh, you know, thus says the Lord of hosts, return to me that I may return to you. And God says, come, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So the way for the Lord to return, uh, to return to the Lord is to depart from evil ways 
and evil deeds and to listen to the word of God. So we need to return to the Lord as he will return to us. And what does that mean? To depart from evil ways and evil deeds and listen to the word of God. So when we get to a point where we don't want to listen to the word of God and it becomes very burdensome, you know, that's a, a danger sign. It's, a, it's like a warning. We need to uh, really uh, examine ourselves. You know, when we get a cold, we have symptoms, right? When we uh, start to judge the word and when we start to uh, be like the Israelites saying like the manna, uh, it's you know, we have nothing else but this manna. It's the same manna every day. Then that's a warning signal. That's a warning signal. And uh, also if, you know, we start to, uh, you know, despise listening to the word of God or despise correction. We don't like to be uh, reprimanded by the word of God. And so those things are all warning signs. Uh, verse four says, do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets proclaimed saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, return now from your evil ways and from your evil deeds, uh, but they did not listen or give heed to me. So we need to give heed to his word. Second, the word given on the 24th day in the 11th month. So the first time Zechariah gave the word was the eighth month. And now a few months had passed by and it was the 11th month and the 24th day. The word of God came to Zechariah the prophet on the 24th day in the 11th month, two months after promising through prophet Haggai, from this day I will bless you on the 24th day of the ninth month. So a two month period from the time Haggai gave that word that God would bless them. And from the point of Zechariah where he gave the word for the first time, it was uh, a few months there. So according to Zechariah 1.7, why don't we read this together? Ready, begin. On the 24th day of the 11th month, which is the month Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah the prophet, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, as follows. So 24th day of the 11th month. And the message he received at this time was eight visions recorded in Zechariah's uh, chapter one through six. And through these visions, God gave assurance that the temple would be constructed. So uh, many scholars say Zechariah is the revelation of the Old Testament because it's very apocalyptic. And the focus is the completion of the temple. So very apocalyptic. It has eschatological meaning and it's focused on the theme of the temple. And if you look at Revelation, and so it's the revelation of the Old Testament. And if you look at Revelation, the real revelation uh, in the New Testament, we see the theme of the temple. In fact, uh, when the appearance of the Lord appears, he's in uh, the, the garments of a priest, the high priest, you know, uh, and and the theme, the theme of the temple is all throughout the book of Revelation. So there's a, it's a, a parallel there. There's a parallel there. Zechariah 1, 16 and 17. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Jerusalem with compassion. My house will be built in it. So it's talking about the temple, right? And it's also talking about, I will return. This is talking about the return of uh, God's glory and uh, the return of uh, himself. And once the temple, once he, uh, he returns and the temple is built, a measuring line will be stretched over Jerusalem. So a measuring line, this is standard measuring line will be taken out. And then my cities again uh, will overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem. 
So the temple will be completed. You know, he will return. And then through that, there will be uh, measuring. There will be sealing. In other words, there is judgment and sealing. So this is talking about sealing and judgment. So God's proclamation concerning the temple construction through prophet Zechariah is as follows. So first of all, God would be a wall of fire, a wall of fire around Jerusalem and the glory in her midst. So Zechariah 2.5 says, For I, declares the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her, and I will be a glory in her midst. So God promises that he himself would come and be the wall and glory amongst the people. And... Uh, this is in relation to the temple. The temple and the walls are related. So he fills, he fills the temple with his glory. That glory overflows to the city. And he becomes a wall of fire. The temple construction is made possible only through the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Not by human strength. And it's our main passage. Not by might. Not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So this means that the temple construction is not done by human might nor power. It is only possible through the work of the Holy Spirit. Third, the temple reconstruction will surely be completed. So God is giving assurance that the temple will be completed. Zechariah 4.9 says, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of the house, and his hands will finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts will, has sent me to you. And in Zechariah 2, 1, 2, Zechariah the prophet saw a man with the measuring line in his hand and asked him, where are you going? The man answered, to measure Jerusalem. So to see how wide it is and how long it is. So once it is completed, there is a ceiling and there is measurement. And as Zerubbabel finished this house, as we studied before, Zerubbabel is, a, um, is uh, a foreshadow of Jesus Christ himself. So Jerusalem must first be restored in order to be measured. Therefore, his uh, words confirmed that the temple reconstruction would indeed be completed. Indeed be completed. So what God starts, he completes in his time. So in conclusion, God reveals a secret counsel to the prophets and have them proclaim it to the people. So uh, he revealed his word to Zechariah and Haggai. Amos 3.7.8, surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsels to his servants, the prophets. A lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy? So we always need to be uh, having our ears inclined and attentive to the word of God, the word of uh, his servants. So servants, the prophets, right? So they are servants with the word of God. And we need to be open to what they say. Uh, it could be a word of uh, encouragement. Sometimes uh, the prophet spoke words of reprimand and rebuke. And it's not because it was personal, but it was just the message of God to point out the sins of his people. And so we need to, you know, be aware that God is speaking through people around us. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Okay, so uh, let us lift up our prayer requests. Uh, let us pray for our nation uh, through the new government. Uh, let us pray that God will work so that this nation will be able to be restored and rise up again in all aspects so that it can truly be a channel of blessing to proclaim the Hisha Redemption, a series word. And let us pray also for Shalo and for our families. It is the time of Lent. Let us uh, pray that we can truly mourn and fast and return to the Lord. Let us pray for the situation with the church and uh, the uh, the uh, picking of the new senior pastor. 
Uh, let us pray for those who are sick and hurting and you know those who are uh, affected by covid and those uh, who um are going through financial uh, struggles or uh, who may be hurting and so there are a lot of people who may be hurting or have been hurt and you know it's really hard to get over that depression or it's hard to get over that bitterness sometimes and so we're really bitter and angry and you know we're we get really critical and judgmental. So let us uh, be able to deal with those things. So uh, let us uh, let us uh, try to sing. I tried it last week, didn't quite work out, but let us sing Zion, new song of the sealed ones. Uh, if I can get it to work here. Uh, one second here. Oh. Let me okay, let me try to put it on normal. Okay. Heavenly New Jerusalem, Zion's holy and blessed mount, by the blood that the Lamb had shed, they're the first fruits of redemption. The 144,000, no lie was in their mouth, led by the Lamb Jesus Christ. They will stand on the top of Mount Zion. Heavenly New Jerusalem, Zion's assembly of God's firstborn. Sealed by God upon their foreheads, the great tribulation was. Overcoming the power of death, proclaimed transfiguration. Learn ye your redemptive history and sing the eternal new song. From end to end in heaven, when redemptive history does proclaim, the sound of roaring thunders will awaken mankind's souls. The world and the nations fall. With your word of redemption, like the loud roar of a lion, let us sing the new song of power. Heavenly firstborn's assembly, for as sealed the Father and the Lamb. Little open book was eaten and proclaimed to all nations. Everlasting gospel shout, all nations come and dance. Oh, sing ye all heaven's new song, and be changed at the last trumpet sound. Let's say Amen Hallelujah three times, and let us pray to our God. Amen, Hallelujah. Amen, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this precious time to have the cell group leaders come together to come before you to receive your word and to pray with one heart. And we give you thanks, honor, and glory to you. Father, as we've learned today, you speak to your people through the prophets and through the people of God. And Father, help us to be attentive to your word. Help us to return to you with all of our hearts and not just render our garments. Father, we're, we're praying for the nation of Korea. May, through the new government, this nation be able to be restored in all of the areas, politically and socially and economically. And may the government be, have uprightness and honesty without any deception or lies. And may they be able to maintain the freedom and democracy of this nation and be able to be a nation that proclaims the History of Redemption series word. And Father, may this COVID-19 be eradicated from this world so that we may be able to have a worship that is centered on the temple. Father, we're praying for Shiloh and her families. We're praying for this church. We pray for the election of the new senior pastor. We pray that all of the processes may be under your providence and may you be able to guide all of the processes so that all things may work together for your good and for your glory. Father, we pray for Shiloh and we pray for those who are hurting. We pray that you heal their hearts, touch their bodies and their hearts, their minds and their emotions. Let this word be able to heal them, transform them and be able to liberate them so that we may ex experience freedom, especially in the time of Lent. May we walk in the footsteps of Jesus, meditating upon his suffering and pain that he went through for the redemption of mankind. Father, we pray for those who are struggling financially in relationships. We pray that your blessings of prosperity and your, your good hand may be upon every areas of our lives so that we may be doing what is pleasing to you and according to your will. We thank you so much. In all these things we pray in Jesus' precious name with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give glory to God. Okay, General Secretary, Dave, do you have any announcements?